Hi guys, I'm Tyler Lawn, Chief Analyst of Cabot Small Cap Confidential and Cabot Early Opportunities, and I'm here with your Cabot Weekly Review. I am recording this on Friday, November 11th, just after 11 o'clock Eastern Time. Uh, first and foremost, today is Veterans Day, so thank you to all that have served and who continue to serve. Um, moving on to the market, so, I mean, gosh, another wild week. So the market was moved this week by the small business report early in the week, midterm elections, the mess in the cryptocurrency market, and then of course Thursday's uh, CPI report. So let's let's back up a little bit. So the small business report came out on Tuesday, indicated small businesses are still down on the economy, they're having a hard time finding, keeping employees, face rising costs, uh, labor costs, having increased prices. Kind of seemed from my read on it that small businesses are dealing with this wage price spiral the fed have been trying to avoid we get into tuesday which was voting day uh, we wake up wednesday we don't quite have a clear picture on the midterm election results but we do know that the red wave didn't really come together as of right now we don't really know where the chips are going to land it looks like the gop can take the house majority while democrats may control the senate but really you know races but just a few races are gonna probably continue to uh, be too close to call for a few days. So it does seem as though we will probably have the divided government that the market wanted, which is good news. And especially regardless of your party affiliation, good to know that the market does tend to do well following midterm elections. So I went over some data from Yardeni research. So since 1942, during each of the three, six and 12 month periods following midterm elections, the S&P 500 was up by an average of 7.6, 14.1, and 14.9%. Out of a total of 60 observations, only three of them were negative. Uh, and none of the 20 observed 12-month changes were negative. So big picture, seems like stocks should be okay for the next 12 months, of course. What happened before isn't guaranteed to happen again, uh, but that's what the data says. All right, on to the crypto market. So I want to back up to last week. Last Friday, I sent a note to Cabot Early Opportunity subscribers. I was watching the weakness uh, in a lot of growth stocks, especially software stocks. Several of them were down 10% or more. It seemed to me reminiscent of when we've seen you know, early days of maybe a fund having some trouble dumping positions. I said to subscribers, we might hear something along those lines the following week. Fast forward to this week, we find out the biggest crypto exchanges, one of them FTX is insolvent. So according to the Wall Street Journal, they're saying things began unraveling late last week. Coindesk published a report suggesting that uh, the Hong Kong crypto trading firm Alameda Research which is majority owned by Mr. Bankman Freed, who founded both FTX and Alameda, had a balance sheet that was largely made up of FTT, the cryptocurrency created by FTX. So as the FTT cryptocurrency goes into freefall, FTX gets into trouble. FTX also apparently lent billions of dollars of customer deposits to Alameda to fund some bets. Alameda owes FTX maybe $10 billion. We're not really sure. Maybe a couple billion more to other lenders. FTX needs a bailout. I've seen numbers going from $4 billion to $8 billion. There's been some um, court filings that have come out more recently with bigger numbers. Another exchange, Binance, had been talking about potentially stepping in to acquire FTX. They decided not to go ahead with that. We also have heard more recently crypto lender BlockFi has paused withdrawals and is limiting activity on its platform because of FTX, from which BlockFi obtained a $400 million line of credit this past summer. So this is obviously a mess and it's going on right now, um, as you all know. And unfortunately, you know, a lot of individual investors have been caught up in this and who knows how it's going to shake out. Um, just a a bit of a mess when we go and look at larger investors so institutional investors last year softbank sequoia third point toma bravo all participated in a 900 million dollar million dollar funding round for ftx 
Tiger Global is also in there. These are some of the bigger names uh, in high growth stocks. The digger you deep, the further you go back, the longer the list gets. On Wednesday, Sequoia wrote a letter saying it is writing off its entire $150 million investment down to zero, down to uh, due to insolvency risk at FTX. So, you know, can we draw a direct line from this FTX situation to the sell-off in equities, in, especially in high growth names last week? No, um, but there's probably some relationship uh, and we'll probably learn more, in, you know, in the days and weeks ahead. But, you know, what what a mess, obviously, um, especially for the people that got pulled into this that didn't really know what was going on. They didn't expect it uh, and weren't aware of the risks, which is pretty much everybody because of, you know, pretty dishonest dealings, it seems like, from FTX and Alameda. Um, okay. On to a more positive note. So yesterday's CPI report, 8.30 yesterday morning, it comes out. It is 0.2% better than expected, pretty much on all measures. So headline CPI was 7.7% versus 7.9% expected. That is also below September's reading of 8.2%. On a month over month basis, it was 0.4%. Again, better than expected uh, at 0.6 percent. We step down and look at core inflation, which excludes food and energy. That was up 6.3 percent versus 6.5 percent expected. Uh, and again, on a month over month basis, 0.3 versus 0.5 percent expected. So across the board, 0.2 percent better than expected. Finally, some good news on both goods and services seeming to cool off. As I said, that report came out at 830. You know, within five minutes, the NASDAQ was indicated to open about 4% higher. Finished the day up 7.35%. Um, the S&P 500 was up 5.5% yesterday. We have a chart of that here. Pull up a chart of the S&P 600 index. Uh, that was up 5.9% yesterday. Meanwhile, the dollar falls. Uh, and yesterday, the 10-year plunges uh, almost 8% to land with a yield of 7, I'm sorry, 3.8%, which brings it back to where it was uh, in early October. Um, I mean, obviously, some pretty significant moves. The bond market is closed today, so we don't necessarily have accurate pricing uh, on yields. We'll have to wait until Monday for that. Um, stepping back, you know, I kind of went to look at what the probabilities of what the Fed's going to do in December this morning. So right now, it uh, looks like an 85% probability that the Fed is going to hike by 50 basis points in December. And if we look out into February, 49% chance of a 25 basis point hike. So we'll have to see, you know, the question isn't really so much about when is the Fed going to start easing. I think that's you know, off the table for the foreseeable future, uh, but more about when could we get to the peak uh, funds rate of this tightening cycle. And of course, the market is starting to price in that that could happen sooner than expected. Um, we step back to the equity market. We have seen analysts slashing forward uh, earnings estimates for the last few weeks. There's been a lot of commentary during this earnings season from management teams about uncertainty regarding the fourth quarter, about 2023. Then this morning I go to uh, the Atlanta Fed's website. They're calling for fourth quarter GDP of 4%. So we're still in this, you know, very, very interesting market where, you know, data is coming in and, and everything's trying to be digested in real time. Um, the big question really is, does yesterday's CPI report change the character of this market? And it's going to take some time for us to see if that if that plays out. Um, obviously, it's great to have some good news. Finally, we've all been waiting for that. Um, but, you know, 24 hours just isn't enough time. Um, OK, on to stocks. So, again, what we're looking for is a more positive change in character for the market. One of the things that would uh, influence that 
is a reversal of this sort of sell on strength trend that we've seen uh, this year, as well as more as well as more recently, uh, a sharp reversal in the harsh sell off among the mega cap tech stocks and a lot of other growth names that just kind of fell apart uh, over the last week, week and a half. So the market is going to need participation from the mega caps to get going. So let's just look quickly at the charts for some of those uh, starting with a slow moving platform here. All right, there's the NASDAQ. Okay, Microsoft is coming back up to kind of where it was shortly after its earnings report from last week, but obviously still pretty beaten down. Amazon was just destroyed after its earnings report, uh, but it's back up now to where it landed when that came out, uh, right around the $100 level. This is one of those things. So there's a little resistance here at just about 100, where Amazon found support uh, in the spring in May, and then again in June. So we'd like to see, obviously, the stock get up through that. But just keep an eye on that $100 level because there is some resistance there. Uh, moving over to Apple, back up near its 50-day line. And then I think I have NVIDIA in here. Yeah, okay, a little bit more of a sustained trend off the bottom here. Uh, we'll just have to see where this goes. So those are the mega caps. Uh, another trend that I've seen just in the last two days. So we've seen some of these safer stocks like uh, Hershey Company, uh, great in a recession, just you know fall apart last couple of days. And then also kind of a conservative bellwether name is uh, United Health. Same kind of thing. Just last day uh, has has sold off pretty significantly. So kind of going back into high growth mode, which is where the money has been flowing for the last 24 hours. So we want to see names like CrowdStrike come back to life. You know, this move off the bottom, whether it's a dead cat bounce or not, it's too early to say. But getting up through 150 here would be pretty pretty key for CrowdStrike. Uh, the company will report in a couple of weeks. It's off cycle. Uh, so keep an eye on that. Also, Build.com, which recently reported, uh, has been moving back up to where it was at the beginning of last week. And this is that dramatic sell-off that I was referring to earlier, uh, where it just seemed like something was going on. And this same kind of thing showed up in a lot of charts, uh, a lot of software stock charts. Uh, but so it's making progress back. We just want to see, see it get back into this range and, um, you know, not sell on strength. Uh, GitLab is the same, same kind of story moving back up into its range from a couple of weeks ago. And then Sprout Social has done better. It sold off last uh, Thursday and Friday, I think it was, and then, you know, had a decent reaction to earnings. But again, here it is around 67, uh, and there's resistance here at 69. So again, just referencing that change of character, we would like to see a name like Sprout move above resistance uh, and hold above that above that level. A couple of other names I haven't talked that much about. So here's Udemy, uh, U-D-M-Y, market cap of 2.2 billion. Kind of similar to Sprout. It has come up against uh, overhead resistance here and failed to break out. Again, we want to see some upward momentum through this ceiling here at 16.6. Uh, before we can have you know more confidence that some of these growth names can can keep going. Nerd Wallet came above overhead resistance after its earnings report and has been chilling out lately in the I guess this is twelve to fourteen dollar range. Um, but a nice move there if it can hold on to that, it could be one to watch. And then STEM ticker symbol S T E M. Uh, interesting story, another software stock back to its 50-day line. Um, and I guess you could say there might be some resistance here at like 14. Uh, but it's another interesting story that if software can get going again, uh, it could be one to watch. 
All right, let's move on to some of the med tech names. So a lot of these stocks have been continuing just to trade in their range. They didn't fall apart like some of the software stocks did. Um, so continued resilience here would obviously be good. Uh, here's ProSet. Even better would be to see some of these names move out above their overhead resistance. That's ProSet and then Shockwave, SWAV. Kind of toyed with falling apart here uh, at the end of last week, but was able to hold it together and come back. Um, not doing that much today. And then Trees Medical. Again, another stock here that's bumping right up against overhead resistance. Sound like a broken record, but we would like to see more names like this be able to bust through, um, give us increased confidence in in a you know sustained recovery here. All right, some energy names, so kind of focused on higher growth stuff, but of course energy continues to be a relatively strong area. So Exxon, Chevron, you know, the names that we all know. If we go down the list, if these names can continue to work, it might be worth taking a look at names like Matador, ticker symbol here is MTDR. Uh, it's a exploration and production company with a market cap of 8.4 billion. Kind of, you know, big picture, similar trend to Exxon as far as the stock goes. And then last stock for today is Targa Resources, so a refiner. Uh, market cap of 16.4 billion ticker symbol here is TRGP and again broken record but looking for a stock here to move above overhead resistance um, before we can have you know confidence that that a lot of these names can continue to do well all right guys that's it for me I hope you have a nice day uh, and a good weekend and we will be back in touch next week take care